Well guys, this is the Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Zombies video. Today we're going to be discussing the infamous quote from Mob of the Dead in which the weasel mentions Nikolai. This has probably been one of the most discussed things ever since Mob of the Dead released for Black Ops 2 and now with the release of the Call of Duty Zombies timeline, I think that we can sort of come up with some ideas as to why the weasel mentions Nikolai. Now this is all going to be a theory but it is one that makes the most sense and is most plausible from what we know at this current point in time. Obviously when Call of Duty 2018 zombies release, this theory could be thrown out the window and it could be explained directly by Treyarch and we may get another explanation. Since Mob of the Dead still has a lot of plot holes and a lot of people think it's going to be remade or remastered in the next game of which we will receive more storyline information in regards to that map and obviously we still don't even know what happens when we break the cycle on the map in terms of a storyline standpoint. So if you do go on to enjoy this video by the end of it make sure to drop a like down below let's try and go for 1000 115 likes on today's video as well subscribe to the channel so you never miss a future upload here on the channel don't forget to turn notifications on to ensure furthermore that you never miss an upload but with that all out of the way let's get straight on in to the video all right so first of all i'm gonna play you guys the quote from the weasel on mob of the dead just so you can refresh your mind on it so i'll let you guys listen to that right now Nikolai, 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 Nikolai. Why do I keep hearing that name? Now, Nikolai actually quoted this quote by the Weasel on Revelations, which I think is Treyarch breaking the fourth wall. And I'll let you guys listen to that quote once again as well. Nikolai, Nikolai, why do I keep hearing that name? Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? Now, Nikolai is kind of joking about the Weasel's quote. I mean, it's become so infamous, it's basically saying even the characters are acknowledging it. And as I said, that's why I think it is breaking the fourth wall here. And he's basically saying, he's simply saying it just because it is his name. But it definitely has a deeper meaning. So I want to take a dive into the Call of Duty Zombies timeline and take a look at what I think this means. Because Mob of the Dead is definitely an interesting map in terms of the story storyline because it's going to be a map that's going to be very, very important in Treyarch's next Call of Duty title. So if we jump into the Dimension 63 universe, this is where Mob of the Dead is held. So I'm going to start off by going through all of the backstory of Mob of the Dead. Now, the reason why this is interesting is because all of the story in regards to, you know, how our four characters ended up in Alcatraz prison, it all happens before Mob of the Dead takes place. Mob of the Dead is essentially a shifted version of Alcatraz from reality that is happening that takes place because of the fact that our characters ended up in Alcatraz. But then all the events that take place after that in regards to Rick Toffin getting the blood vials of the Victus crew and also of Sal and Finn and the secret laboratory underneath Alcatraz, all those events take place after the Mob of the Dead cycle is taking place but essentially they're happening simultaneously which I will explain now. So on July the 18th, 1922, Salvatore Sal DeLuca opens gambling houses across Chicago. This marks the beginning of the DeLuca crime family. On February the 17th, 1923, Billy Hansom joins the DeLuca crime family as a hitman. Sal will come to look at Billy as the son he never had. On September the 18th, 1923, an expert in gambling and rigging sporting events, Michael Finn O'Leary begins working for Sal. On March the 23rd, 1924, Finn marries Angelina Bow, an aspiring starlet with delusion of grandeur. On March the 1st, 1929, Sal writes of his frustration with Chicago's finest. After many years of successful bribes with the city, it becomes clear that it is no longer an option. On May the 11th, 1930, Sal begins to work with Albert Al Arlington, an associate in LA known for being a master schemer and bank robber. On October the 10th, 1930, Finn informs his lawyer he will not accept divorce from Angelina, saying she can leave this marriage the day she leaves this earth. On October the 11th, 1931, after the LA heist for Sal goes wrong, Al wakes up in the hospital. On October the 28th, 1931, while in the hospital, Al submits Icarus from Mars for publication as a comic strip. It is his third attempt. It is denied again. On November the 11th, 1931, angry and frustrated with his collapsing empire, Sal kills a prostitute. No longer willing to turn a blind eye, Chicago Police Department arrests him. On December the 1st, 1931, in an operation against the DeLuca crime family, Billy is 
arrested for multiple homicides. On December the 19th, 1931, in an operation against the DeLuca crime family, Finn is arrested by Chicago Police Department when his wife offers evidence against him. On January the 19th, 1932, Al is arrested for his role in the LA heist. On May the 14th, 1932, Sal is found guilty of murder. He is sentenced to life in prison at Alcatraz. On May the 16th, 1932, Billy is found guilty of 116 counts of murder. He is sentenced to life in prison at Alcatraz. On May the 30th, 1932, Finn is found guilty of 16 counts of gambling fraud. He will serve his sentence at Alcatraz. On June the 13th, 1932, Sal and Billy arrive at Alcatraz. On June the 30th, 1932, Finn arrives at Alcatraz Island. On July the 1st, 1932, Al is found guilty of grand larceny, grand theft auto, arson, conspiracy and battery. He will serve his sentence at Alcatraz. On August the 3rd, 1932, Al arrives at Alcatraz Island. On January the 13th, 1933, Stanley Ferguson begins working at Alcatraz Island. On April the 1st, 1933, Al convinces Sal, Finn and Billy that they can build a plane and escape Alcatraz. On December the 2nd, 1933, realising the plane will never be completed and embittered with rage, Sal, Finn and Billy plot to get revenge on Al. On December the 31st, 1933, Finn, Sal and Billy lure Al to the roof and kill him. On January the 11th, 1934, stepping through a rift, Richthofen secures the blood samples of Sal and Finn. On January the 19th, 1934, found guilty of Al's murder, Sal, Finn and Billy are executed by electric chair. Now this is where we get into the storyline of Mob of the Dead. This is what we actually play in game. Alright, so after Al is murdered and Sal, Finn and Billy are executed by the electric chair, this is where we jump into Mob of the Dead's storyline. Now, Mob of the Dead, as he said, is a purgatory-like realm and it's simply a universe. Well, it's not a universe because it's still within Dimension 63. This is something that you have to take note of. It's sort of a pocket away from reality that is slightly shifted from reality, just like Morgue City. Morgue City is still taking place, but then it's been shifted from reality, which creates Shadows of Evil. In this case, we have Alcatraz, but then we have a shifted version of Alcatraz that is Mob of the Dead. So Sal, Finn, Billy and Al battle waves of the undead as they find themselves trapped in a seemingly endless cycle. Now, the endless cycle that they are trapped in is when Sal, Finn and Billy kill Al, because that is exactly what happens that gets them trapped in this cycle, because obviously those three kill Al and then they are electrocuted by electric chair. So if they continue the cycle by doing the exact same thing, they never learn from their lesson. Now, as to why they are trapped within this cycle, no one really knows for definite, but a lot of people think that it is Dr. Monty's doing because he is testing out the cycle. And I also think that the overarching cycle that starts and ends with revelations, I think it only continues because the cycle does not break from this loop that they are trapped in. However, whilst this cycle is happening because it's shifted from reality, the exact events happen where on April the 16th, 1940, Richthofen arrives in Dimension 63 where he contacts members of the Illuminati and enlists their help to build a laboratory facility beneath Alcatraz. Then on April the 18th, 1940, Richthofen meets with Stanley Ferguson and convinces him to assist with the Illuminati's construction of the Alcatraz laboratory. Then on July the 3rd, 1941, Stanley Ferguson reports that the laboratory has been completed and that the subjects will be placed in the safest chambers upon arrival. Then on July the 4th, 1941, Richthofen returns to the lab under Alcatraz where he meets Victus. Victus is obviously the transit crew, arriving from the empty Earth with the Cronorium. Upon reading the Cronorium, Richthofen discovers numerous timelines documenting their fates and learns about the blood vials. He will lay it right on the page, I know now what I must do, Edward Richthofen, 4th of the 7th, 41. Richthofen enters the rift to acquire the blood of Sal and Finn. So essentially what he does is he goes through a rift back in time to prior to the inmates being trapped within the Mob of the Dead cycle when they are still alive. I would assume he did this right after they died. He went ahead and got the blood. Now, what I think happens is our characters die, obviously, and that Mob of the Dead is simply their afterlife. Well, it is. It's their afterlife, essentially. So, our characters die, and because of the bad things they've done, they're trapped within this cycle, because it is a purgatory-like realm, which I think is controlled by Dr. Monty. Now, after he has collected the blood of Sal and Finn, Richthofen then goes through a rift back in time to prior to Origins, and he gives this blood to his youngest self, and that's why on Origins, Richthofen has the blood of Sal and Finn. Now, he then recovers the blood vials belonging to Victus, and he returns, and then Victus is placed on ice to be kept safe until they are needed next within the cryogenic chamber.
universe. Now, this is where a lot of people think that maybe Mob of the Dead Remastered or the remake will be played as the transit crew because it would make sense. Now, then on July the 4th, 1941, Primus arrives to collect the Victor's blood samples from Richtofen. Now, this is in between Zetsubo Noshima and Garod Krovi, where they go through a rift and go to Mob of the Dead and collect the blood samples from this other version of Richtofen. So, following Primus's departure, Richtofen learns the location of the summoning key and travels to his next location. Then on October the 1st, 1943, Stanley Ferguson leaves employment at Alcatraz, and then all of the events of Shadows of Evil happen. Now, the reason why the Weasel mentions Nikolai within Mob of the Dead, I think is because, as he said, they are trapped within an afterlife, within an endless cycle. Now, whilst this endless cycle is happening, all of the events at Alcatraz are still happening to do with the blood vials and this secret laboratory and the Victor slash Transit crew. All of these events still happen. Now, what this means is that when our premise characters in between Zetsubo Nishima and Garod Krovi come to collect the Victor's blood samples, it means that the two versions of Alcatraz are happening at essentially the same time. We have this cycle happening in a purgatory afterlife type version of Alcatraz, and then we have the normal version of Alcatraz. And I think it is the two realms bleeding together because it's like two things happening at once in the exact same place. And because our premise characters go there, the weasel learns of Nikolai. Now, again, this could be completely wrong. Maybe they have direct interaction with each other and they directly know each other. We know that the Shadows of Evil and Mob of the Dead crew directly know each other, but that's all for another video. But yeah, that is why I think he says this quote within Mob of the Dead, but again, this is just a theory. But yeah, this whole thing to do with the Blood Vials is pretty cool. It's quite confusing because there's a lot of Rick Toffins involved. But yeah, Mob of the Dead really fits into the storyline nicely. However, obviously there are two different endings of Mob of the Dead where one of the endings is we break the cycle. Now, I think when we break the cycle, this will stop all these events happening afterwards from happening, and I think it would stop the whole paradox that is the blood vials, so they wouldn't have them within Revelations, so Dr. Monty wouldn't send them back in time to Primus, and it would completely break the cycle. But this isn't mentioned within the timeline at all, but maybe that could be some sort of relevance to how Nikolai knows the weasel. Possibly if the cycle is broken, they may interact at some point within the future, but this is all for Call of Duty 2018. We don't know where the storyline is going further out, but let me know what you think of this theory in the comment section down below as always. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Black Ops 3 Zombies, World War 2 Zombies, and Call of Duty 2018 Zombies News and Information Centers. Thank you for watching, and there, uh, bye.